oxygen source here and this video is a response video or reaction video so to speak because um i've been referred to a certain video that had came out a couple of days ago and when the link was posted uh, for me to click um initially i said i didn't want to click on it because I knew that it was going to be bad. Um, I knew the people that were included in it. So with me knowing the people that were included in it, I was like, I know this is going to be bad. So for the first day that it was out, I didn't watch it. Second day that it was out, I didn't watch it. But because of uh, you know a good friend of mine, a good connect that you know, has been part of, you know, the podcast and part of the discussions that, you know, we have in the YouTube boxing community, I said that I was going to go ahead and take the time and sit down and watch and or listen to the video. And it is, you know, a video that was like posted on IFL TV. Um, and I think the title was what? The Truth of YouTube Boxing is what it was called. And it had four people on there. And yeah, I'm gonna, you know, call them out. You had Marcos Villegas, you had Coogan Cassius, you had Michelle Joy Phelps, you had Radio Raheem, okay? And I think uh, Coogan, and did a video conference with the other three. And they were talking about, you know, what their status is, you know, right now uh, with, you know, boxing being inactive for over two months now. Um, because, you know, ever since March 12th, uh, well, it's Thursday, March 12th, Friday, March 13th, whatever it is, there had been no live sports and no live boxing. Uh, particularly in the UK and in the US since. So with that being said, you know, these four have been quote unquote fairly inactive or they haven't been, you know, doing as much as they usually do. And so for about an hour and a half, you had these four pretty much <laughs> I would say complain about what's going on. Um, I didn't really hear that much from Marcos Villegas because uh, he didn't really, you know, vocally complain all that much. He did say that he's, you know, kind of hurting a little bit, but, you know, he said that he's trying to make adjustments on the fly, whatever it is. But he didn't, you know, gripe about it as much as some of the other ones. But, <sighs> when my friend told me about this video, he specifically talked about one person in general. And yes, I'm going to talk about this person in general. And that's Radio Raheem. Now, the Beginning of the video pretty much like says straight out, man, that he's, you know, crying and whining about all this stuff and what's going on and he can't do this and he can't do that. But on top of that, one of the biggest complaints that he brought up is that he's saying that while he's been out there, he's had to quote-unquote fight tooth and nail and scratch and claw you know to try to get an interview with boxers or promoters or whatever it is and I was like man this sport needs more people to pay attention to it they need more people to talk about the sport and while you claim to have been in this quote-unquote YouTube boxing game for about what 
nine years, 10 years, or done this stuff for 20 plus years, you're not the only one that is the be all in all when it comes to talking to these fighters or you know, talking to promoters or doing interviews. You're not. There are other people out there that talk about the sport every single day that try to get access to these fighters so that the fighters have, you know, a way to communicate what they want to do or, you know, say to fans of the sport. They're not going to always go to your channel. They're not going to do that. So if they're not going to do that, there's going to have to be some other way to, you know, get access to it, right? So in essence, you had the guy continue to complain. And I was like, man, shit. So he talked about instances where he had to be like, oh, only get one or two minutes with the fighter or one or two minutes with the promoter, you know, when I'm trying to do my job. But the problem is other people have to do their job as well. Other people have built what they built from the bottom to the point that they're at now. And they're not going to back down or claim that you have seniority over them because they have a task to do, and that is to provide content on their page. Now, if you want to gripe and complain to, to the PR people or whatever it is for them giving credentials to these individuals, that's a whole nother story because they have their own vetting process themselves. You talk about when people fill out the online applications or they give phone calls or whatever it is that, oh, they have to do this and they have to do that. Like, you, you do understand that a lot of these people that get these credentials have been denied time after time after time, right? So when they do get approved, they have to make the most out of what they can do at the event that they're in because that is going to be part of their quote unquote resume to when they're able to apply for other events. Okay. So with that being said, you can't necessarily say, Oh, uh, those other guys have to, you know, be on the back seat or sit on the back seat and let us do our thing first. And then after that, then they can do it. No, that's not how it works, man. That's not how it works. You have a press conference. These people are able to ask the questions in the press conference. After that, then the promoters or the fighters have the time to talk to those that are there to cover the sport. You are complaining about the other people that are coming in there with a quote-unquote cell phone, but... If y'all check the earlier videos that I posted, I've talked about how you've had journalists that have been in the game for 40 years plus that write about the sport that are being replaced by who? Oh yeah, those YouTube guys that are now complaining about the new people coming in. And what I'm feeling is that they have an issue because they're saying, oh, we ain't even been here as long as those other guys and we're being replaced. Psst, come on, stop it. You have your piece of the pie. Other people can have their piece of the pie. You can't take the whole pie, period. That's not how it goes. You see, with me, I don't care. If I get in, I get in. If I get in a question, I get in a question. If I don't, I don't. I move on. As long as I have the material. That's the main point. As long as I have that material, I'm all good. Because guess what? This whole YouTube thing, 
That ain't where I started. I started by writing, writing about the sport for four years before even starting a podcast. Then after I did a podcast, I still wasn't going into those events. But even with that, after getting credentials for those events, you know what I was doing? Taking photos. So not only was I writing, but I was also there for photography before I even started this YouTube thing. It took one of my friends that had been covering the sport alongside me that had been in a couple of these bigger events that said, hey, you need to start doing things on YouTube. That was the only reason why I basically started. But the difference between me and these, I guess these four people is that I started doing something else before YouTube. So that means I'm experienced in doing those other things other than YouTube. So you know what? That's exactly what I've been doing. <laughs> they talking about, oh, oh man, we ain't had boxing in over two months and I'm tired of talking to these people and giving the same questions and they get the same redundant questions time and time over. I don't care. Let me tell you something, all right? You had this supposed lockdown thing going down. What did I say? Around March 12th, March 13th. Okay. Let me run by what I've done from a podcast perspective from the beginning of March, right after the card of Mikey Garcia and Jesse Vargas. After that card to now. Let's see. Let me name some people that I have been able to get in contact with. Shannon Briggs, Riddick Bowe, Willie Monroe Jr., okay, Austin Trout, Free Ray Rick Ross, okay, Kobe and Soldier Breedy, but Coach Floyd Seymour, okay. So called Stephen Nelson, Tika Hemingway, Raquel Miller. And how many weeks has that been? 10 weeks? And I've been able to contact them and have interviews with them over the phone. Now, if I could do that, y'all could do that. It should be no excuse for just sitting around, not doing anything with the amount of quote unquote experience that y'all have. Where y'all can't interview boxes. While this is a quote unquote niche sport, according to a few people, it's still a lot of fighters that you could talk to. It's still a lot of fighters that would love to be a part of your page. Now for me, I know about Coogan. I know that Coogan does work over at IFL or whatever it is, MTK Global. I know that Marcos Viegos does work, you know what I mean, with his channel. But with, with Michelle Joy Phelps and Rita Raheem, why are they complaining about doing these interviews? I don't care if it sounds redundant to you. I don't care if it doesn't look like they want to do those interviews, do it anyway. Because if you have the reach that you say that you have, then definitely you'll want to do those interviews. All of y'all have more access or more reach than someone like me does. But the difference is I don't complain about it. 
I sit there, I do the work, I reach out, and if they say that they want to go through with it, they go. If not, cool, I don't care. Because I know that there's going to be somebody else that I can reach. But this whole thing about complaining like, oh, woe is me. Oh, there's no boxing. Oh, there's nothing for me to cover. Oh, when boxing comes back, there's maybe just nothing but Zoom interviews. So what? If you don't have a podcast, create one. Because if you have the reach that you got, all the subscribers you got on YouTube, then don't think for one second that you can't get those subscribers to listen to or watch your podcast. I ain't saying that it's going to be a level of, you know, the Mike Tyson podcast, but at the very least, you could do some something and then see what you get from that. Because my thing is, when it comes to this thing with boxing and boxing coverage, you can't just do stuff from YouTube sometimes. That isn't going to be enough. So I'll just put it like this. Y'all got to get right or y'all going to get left. And that's the truth about YouTube boxing. Either get right or get left. Because I don't care if it's someone from IFL TV or behind the gloves or uh, what is it, Fight Hub or whatever it is, or you know, the thing with Radio Raheem, you got a whole lot of guys that are out there or people that are out there that talk boxing 24 7, 365. And I know a good number of them that know boxing uh, more than y'all do. I talk with guys like Unrivaled Boxing Talk News that knows boxing like the back of his hand. I had a recent spat with another person that does boxing, the Boxing Jedi. Even though we had a spat and we don't really talk, I know that he knows more boxing than probably all of y'all put together. I'll say that straight up. I got guys like YSM Sports Media that's out there working hard, going to the gyms, talking with the fighters, the younger fighters, the fighters coming up, not just the pros, not just the well-established fighters. Just talking to the young ones coming up, the ones that have been in the game also, that have experienced, but ain't up there in that top level. You know? I got guys like my man Matt that once once he gets jumped off, he's gonna he's gonna I feel that he's gonna blow up. Okay. You got guys like Ring IQ that's out there. You got guys like Fighter IQ. You got guys like Mike on sports. Out there putting work every day. Every day. You think they complaining like this? No, they're not. They just out there putting in work because that's what it's all about. Putting in work, getting the sport of boxing out there so that more people will be able to become fans of the sport because believe it or not, if it wasn't for guys like that, if it wasn't for those in the, what y'all call it, LDBC, the boxing egos, the, the, the barbershop conversations, the, the you know, whatever else they're out there, the, the guys like Counterpunch Boxing News, like all, all of those people contribute to the popularity of the sport. And you just can't dismiss them that quickly. That ain't how the game goes. You can't, like I said, you can't have all of the pieces of the pie. That's not how it works. So, like I said before, and I'll say it again, if you have an issue 
with all of these other people, then here's my thing. Go ahead and take it up with those promoters. Go ahead and take it up with those PR people if you want to. Then let's see what happens when you start getting those applications denied. Let's see what you do after that. Because like I said before, either you're going to have to get right or you will get left. And that's what I got to say about that. I'm out. Peace.